Hi everyone, and welcome back to Questions on the Parsha. This week's Parsha is Parsha Truma, and I've got some questions for you. You know, our Parsha begins with the description of the materials that it'll take to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle, gold, silver, copper, all kinds of cloth and dyes. And my question is this, what does the experience of beauty add to holiness? There's a word that encapsulates the relationship between beauty and holiness in Hebrew, and that word is tiferet. If you look in Shmot, the 28th chapter in the second line, you'll see the first appearance of this word when it describes the big day kahuna, the clothes of the Kohen Gadol. Because there it says you should make clothes for your brother Aaron, the Havod Uli Tiferet, for his glory and his Tiferet, his beauty. Now, on a different level, the question is really, what faculties do we have for accessing the experience of holiness? Okay, second question. You know, in the 25th chapter, in the 16th line, a transformation occurs in Luchot Abrit, the tablets of the covenant. They become an edut, right? When Moshe is told to build the Ark of the Covenant and to put the kaporet, the covering on top of it, inside he's told to put the edut. And this notion of edut, which really means a testimony, which gives witness to the relationship between God and Israel, that then becomes the name of the Mishkan itself, the Mishkan Ha'edut. So my question is this, what does this form of testimony teach us about the relationship we're invited into in the Mishkan between God and humanity? Okay, last question. Right on top of that Arna Ha'edut we were just speaking about, that Ark of the Covenant, are the Kruvim, these intense angels, wings and faces made of gold. Right? And it says there in the 25th chapter, in the 22nd line, V'nodati l'cha sham v'dibarti itcha. Right? Nodati, I will become known to you. And don't miss the comparison to Shmot 6, chapter 3, where we spoke about the meaning of this word, nodati. But not only will I become known to you, there I will speak to you. Right? This is the place where the relationship of intimacy is available between God and Israel. And that's my question. Why is it davka? just from between the Kruvim, that the live relationship with God flows. Now, as a bit of a guidance, I want you to go look at the only other place in the Chumash that the Kruvim are mentioned. That's in the third chapter, in the 24th line, in Sefer Breshit. And there it says, Vahishkan mikedem lagan eden et ha-Kruvim. Once Adam has been driven out of the garden, God causes the Kruvim to dwell. Notice the language of Ishkon and Mishkan. He causes those Kruvim to dwell, guarding the path to the tree of life. So why is it from between the Kruvim that the live relationship with God flows? Okay, that's it for this week. If you have any answers to these questions, I'm happy to hear them. You can send them to us via YouTube or on our Facebook page. Shabbat Shalom.